Hi there, today I'm going to show you how I painted and weathered the cockpit of Tamiya Sublime, one 30 second scale Corsair. So grab your favorite snack, sit back, and enjoy. Construction of the cockpit subassemblies is straightforward, so we're going to jump straight into the painting. I've begun by priming the parts with Tamiya Fine Surface Primer, which gives a smooth and uniform surface for paint. Before I begin laying down the main color, I need to do a bit of prep for some light chipping effects. For this, I'm using MRP White Aluminum. This goes down right over the Tamiya Primer. You don't need a gloss black base for MRP Metallics, especially for a base layer to chip down to. However, a smooth surface is always a must with Metallics, in my opinion. Just a couple light coats and we're ready for liquid frisket masking. This is just a product I get at the local arts and crafts store, but several modeling brands have masking fluid that will work equally well. This is where hoarding that Edward packaging material comes in handy. Tearing off a small piece, I dip it into the fluid, and much like dry brushing, I remove most of the excess. Dab the fluid onto the part you want to chip. If you're unhappy with it, you can remove it and try it again. You can also come back once it's dry and refine your shapes by removing select bits here and there. I'm now ready to begin laying down base paints. First, I'm going to start with the shadow layer. To create this, I'm using the base MRP interior green and I'm mixing it with NATO black about 50-50 to create a shadow layer. This is laid down evenly on each sub-assembly. Now time for the next layer, which I suppose we can call the first highlight. For this, I'm using the interior green straight from the bottle. Basically, I'm going to use this color like I would with black basing, marbling it into the appropriate areas, avoiding points where I want the shadow layer to remain. This works a bit like black basing, however, I found that black bases generally only work for some colors. I'm not wild about how it works, or doesn't really, with greens. Now that all the sub-assemblies are painted with the highlight shade, the remaining paintwork will be done with brushes. Now I'm going to mix up an even lighter green color for raised highlights. For this I'm using Vallejo model color green and yellow and mixing them in my wet palette. A 3-0 brush is used and I carefully paint raised details like the cockpit ribbing. The forward bulkhead provides a great example of this technique in action. I don't care if it'll never be seen, this is a lot of fun, so I can't resist. Remember this is just one of many steps, these highlights will work in unison with the base work I've already painted and the washes to come. Things will all come together to create depth and interest in the finished product. Now I'm going to focus on detail painting the consoles, knobs, and whatnot. To start, I'm going to mix some Vallejo black gray with a drop of straight black to darken it just a bit. I don't want these consoles to be pure black, at least not entirely. Once I have this base down, I'll come back and hit some various areas with pure black just to shake things up a bit. With the consoles, throttle, quadrant, and other bits done in black, it's time to focus my attention on the smaller details throughout the cockpit. First, the elements that are supposed to be aluminum were picked out with Leo Metal Colors acrylic. These metallics are about as user-friendly for brush painting as I've encountered. And now all the other details. A few red switches and buttons and then the rest of the knobs are done up in gray. Next I paint the seat belts on the lovely Barracuda Studios resin seat. I went with a resin seat with molded belts because personally I'd rather paint harnesses than deal with the tedious fabric belts. In my opinion molded belts can look just as nice if they're painted well. Whether I'm able to do it, I will leave to your judgment. I start with a Leo khaki. Once the base is down I lighten that color with about 50-50 white and I come back to attempt to paint some highlights to add some depth. I'm still developing my skill set in this area, but I think it'll do. Now I want to turn my attention to the headrest. We will replicate the worn weather effect by first giving the part a base of dark brown paint. 
Next I tear off a small piece of sponge and I distress the part with a light brown mix. I like to think of this technique as chipping. Of course leather doesn't chip per se, but the technique is the same. I also come in with the same color and fine brush and add some scratches and cracking. Anything I'm not happy with I'll correct with the base color. I think this looks the part, even if I'm still not convinced I know what I'm doing. And if you're enjoying this video, please tap the subscribe button and be sure not to miss the next episode. This is a great way to support the channel and it just takes a few seconds. Thanks! And like that, all the painting was done. Now I dealt with a couple of small decals. Because I just had a couple small ones to deal with, I didn't do any special prep. However, I do use some Tamiya decal adhesive. This is the glue you put under the decal to ensure proper adhesion, thus eliminating the risk of silvering. After that was dry, I hit the decal with Mark Fit just to make sure things were snug and secure. Now I mixed a dark green wash using Eptilong oils. Smoke and faded green will do the trick here, and now things start to come together. The wash is a magical time during any build. It's amazing how much life it can bring to an otherwise flat and boring surface. And once the wash is dry, I work away the unwanted bits with a cotton swab. This is where using oil pays off, as even though the wash is dry, the oil is still workable. Control is the name of the game. Now the only thing left to do is seal everything up with a flat coat. For this, I like to use Ammo One-Shot Primer, the transparent version. Though sold as a primer, this stuff has an amazing flat coat. It's very effective at helping hide decal film as well. It goes on wet, but like other One-Shot slash Badger primers, it levels wonderfully. Now that I have a good flat coat to provide some grip, I use a Prismacolor pencil to add some wear. Think of applying the pencil like you're dry brushing. This is best for adding wear to sharp edges. Chipping will be handled with a more effective technique. Anything much more than edge wear and the pencil starts to look like, well, pencil. Enter the trusty Silver Ammo Oil Brusher. I'm not using the supplied applicator. Instead, I opt for my trusty 3.0 brush. This oil product works amazingly well at doing brush painted chips. The beauty is that unlike an acrylic paint, it's stupid easy to clean up if you make a mistake. Also, you can see, it looks a lot more like actual metal. The one disadvantage is you must be extra careful not to touch it while it dries. The flat coat will help with the drying, but still, the oil is easy to disrupt. And like that, the cockpit is done. Now it's just a matter of bringing the sub-assemblies together. Again, this is Tamiya, no surprises. There's nothing to catch you off guard here. Let's get this thing together and close up the fuselage and start thinking about the work ahead. So keep an eye out for the next episode when we take a look at Tamiya's wonderful effort with the R2800 radio. And if you like this video, be sure to check out the rest of the channel. Thank you and see you next time.